All right, howdy. Welcome back to the Duke Motors YouTube channel. And we're going to take a brief hiatus from talking about dilapidated, crappy Land Rover Range Rovers. And uh, we're going to check out, well, frankly, a, a better truck. So what I got here is a third gen 4Runner. This is specifically a uh, 2001 model. Uh, it was like a U180 or something chassis, they called it. And uh, these... This is again, this is one of those trucks or cars like a W123 Mercedes or a Miata or an old Ford pickup that every car guy or gal should experience to really understand what a good car is. And uh, again, this is just one of those platforms and one of those chassis and one of those motors and one of those packages that uh, is getting rarer and harder to find these days in good condition. Again, and let's talk about the market real quick, Forerunner tax. You know, Forerunners have always been the kind of the cheap go-to for off-roaders. Uh, they then became kind of overland popular, and most of the owners that kind of started their kind of four-wheel drive off-road journeys have since branched out to something probably a little less reliable. They're almost too good. Again, they don't they don't check every single box, but they're an extremely well-packaged vehicle for the time. Uh, I really enjoy them. I haven't had a whole lot of experience with them, uh, mainly because I personally owned a fourth gen and I've driven a lot of uh, fifth gen uh, forerunners, particularly I had a, uh, a 2003 with the 4.7 V8. This 2001, uh, which is one of the later models of the whole model run, uh, is, is one that I particularly like, is at least aesthetically, with the body color bumpers and fender flares and the cleared out rear taillights. Um, and it's kind of finished in black. This particular one is an SR5 uh, all-wheel drive. Um, again, finished in black, cloth interior. Uh, these came with the, lace, the last spec uh, 3400 V6, which makes around 180 some horsepower. Not very fast, but decently torquey, four-speed automatic. Um, and, you know, it, it's really, it's a nice, compact, small package. This is what everyone really needs. Everyone thinks they need something else. They need a Land Cruiser, they need something else. This is, this encompasses it all. And uh, again, they're, they're getting hard to find and a little bit more, and I still find them interesting. So let's get a, to a quick walk around this particular car, um, show you the inside, start it up, uh, show you the undercarriage, uh, and I'll give you a little background of the car and, you know, just kind of give it a once over. All right, so we talk about 4Runner. Again, it, it, has, it has towing capability. This one has a tow package, um, also unique to 4Runners. Again, cool packages. You know, this one has the factory roof rack, these little spoilers. This one's actually metal. The one on my Land Cruiser was plastic. Um, you know, it also has the sliding rear hatch glass, which, again, Toyota still uses that feature, but, you know, most people don't know about it until they hit the button, honestly. Um, from the exterior, you know, you've kind of got oversized meaty tires, which are kind of a thing back in the 90s, you know, small, smaller wheels, but again, kind of that, that good tire to wheel ratio. So it rides smooth, it rides nice. This one has uh, the factory uh, running boards, which is fine. Again, body, mother, body color molding, fog lights, clear glass, headlights. This one has, since the SR5, it has a little hood scoop, which again, looks great. Got the power, you know, I love the Japanese cars of these era with the Land Cruiser and the Lexuses, with these smooth operating uh, power antennas that always work. I tell you, when you get in one of these, you know, if the antenna doesn't go up, that means you got a problem, but usually they work. Um, and it's just a sporty, good looking package. You know, it's again, I keep saying compact and that that's, that's a, big deal if you're if you're on the trails you can fit all your stuff you can get through without pinstripes and it makes it just a, a more enjoyable kind of off-road experience so this particular one 230 some thousand miles which again anytime you see a forerunner it's always 200 300 thousand miles um, this is a pretty all original car this one came to us because it had a rusted rear shock mount which actually involved us taking the body off the frame so this this truck has been a lot of man hours of kind of getting this kind of back into uh, really great shape because again, that's usually something that totals it for most cars. The, the frame was not rusty besides this one spot where the rear shock attached and it was, uh, yeah, it was kind of, it was rusted through. So we took the body off the car, fixed the shot mount, put it back on. So that's, that's how it kind of it came to us. And since then it's received a bunch of maintenance and whatnot. So again, that's kind of the, out, the exterior. I think it's a very handsome looking vehicle. Um, and uh, it's again, lots of, um, again, off-roaders <laughs> off love them. Kids love them. They're a good first car. 
they're a good second car they're a good third car i mean like i said there's just not there's not a lot of bad things to say about this i don't even think the land cruiser or range rover guys can can fault uh, how, how solid of a vehicle this is so let's uh let's jump inside of it all right so my qualm with forerunners and again I, I owned one so i can come from this is you always sit to you know the seat is is positioned pretty much right on the the floor it's not raised up as it is in a land cruiser or a gx so you really do feel like you're sitting directly on the floor which again doesn't like mr regular says and actually he bought one of these uh it's not a whole lot of knee room for taller guys so Super long road trips, this isn't gonna be your car, but this is the car that you buy as a second car for off-road trips, camping trips, throwing your dogs in the back, and just uh, having a reliable second or third vehicle that you can really, again, enjoy and use, even though it's 20 years old. It doesn't, it, it, it won't really feel like. All right, so more Forerunner things. Let me, uh, oh, I don't think I have. All right, under the hood, 3400, four cam, 24 valve, V6, 5 VZFE, whatever, who cares? Torquey little V6. Uh, you know, again, this is one of those trucks you do oil and brakes and you throw a Tommy belt on it every once in a while and you don't really worry about it besides then, besides the rust. There's not a whole lot to talk about under here. But uh, yeah, if you're looking for one of these, I, I would say I would say look around. Um, you know, again, this is, this is a car like an STI or something that's just been through a lot of different owners in a lot of different situations and it's just they clean examples are just really hard to find i keep going i mentioned before i think mr regular from uh, regular car views bought one for like 12 grand with 70,000 miles and again that's the toyota tax uh this one will actually be for sale and i don't really plan to list list it cheaply uh, since we've done a bunch of maintenance on it. it's got new tires it has new brakes it has a decent timing belt oil change belt service it just doesn't really need anything else besides uh you know someone to kind of take it to the next level um, but yeah, again, they're, they're, they're neat trucks. It's a good car to have around. I, I, I don't really have anything bad to say. I wouldn't want to have this as my main car forever, but as a third or a second car to do, you know, everything else, it definitely, uh, definitely, you know, checks that box for me. I love the, <laughs> the four wheel drive button right there. So let's, uh, let's actually take it on the road and go for a spin. See how she drives. All right, so before we set off, I just want to park the two trucks next to each other. And they're, I'm not pulling out the measuring tape, they're almost the exact same length. Um, obviously, width-wise, the Land Cruiser is going to win that one. But, you know, as far as, you know, actual length and wheelbase and whatnot, they're pretty, pretty close. All right, let's take off here. So, snaps right in the gear no uh no hesitation or anything like that which is always a good sign of a healthy transmission no uh u-joint clunks or anything which is sometimes uh, a toyota kind of sometimes you go through neutral slowly to prevent that so i'm going to try out the foil drive uh actuation so it's in high put it in neutral push it up to low and the little wheels on the dash will light up uh, and then i'm going to engage the four-wheel drive button and press my diff lock which it should blink and then engage and we are in four low always want to check out your low range in a four by four um, because again most people just don't really use it that often so that's always the one of the first things i check uh make sure you're doing it in a gravel setting so you're not running around in low range with the diff lock on hard pavement and uh, good way to burn out your drivetrain so let's uh let's make sure it pops out of that there's another nice little tacoma all right neutral disengage foil drive pop off the center diff pull it back into high, drop it into drive. All your lights should go off. Or not, oh, there they go, okay, and I'm out. Cool. So, I'm choosing this back alley path just to kinda 
feel out the suspension, which, you know, it feels good. Again, oversized tires, I will always choose oversized tires over uh, over big wheels, especially in a urban setting like Richmond, Virginia. The roads are pretty terrible here, so not really, uh, you're not really gaining anything by the, uh, the small sidewall. But uh, yeah, brakes feel good. Discs in the front, unfortunately, drums in the back. You know, you can't, uh, it is an early 90s Toyota platform, so that's to be expected. All right. Give her a little bit of throttle here. Definitely not fast, but it has a great view kind of over the bonnet. I like the, the uh, exaggerated uh, little intake scoop that it has. It's, uh, I wouldn't call it super sporty, but definitely makes it uh, a little more interesting to look at, I guess. Oh man, all the traffic. Gotta love, gotta love driving around this time of day. But uh, yeah, again, you can hear that, that fan noise, probably from the viscous fan. Um, again, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it. It's just, it, it just runs a little louder than everybody else. But like I was saying before, this is a great urban off-roader. I mean, like I said, you can park it anywhere. You've got great visibility. Uh, you know, it, it, it's not the uh, it's not the greenhouse that a Range Rover Classic is, but it's pretty comparable besides the lower roof line to how you feel driving around in a D1 or D2. You know, it's everything you need, but no excess space. Uh, the, the Land Rovers kind of make up for it in the roof height a little bit. Uh, you're definitely slung a little bit lower and longer here, but it definitely has a good kind of compact feeling. And uh, again, just kind of bopping around town or uh, threading your way through some trails. This is, this is all you need, honestly. And yeah, I guess, and my last point is, you know, with all the kind of CUV takeover, there's not a lot of little trucks that drive like a truck which people used to kind of talk down on, but I think most people, uh, after driving in a lifted car, or as people say, a lifted Camry or lifted Civic or whatever your comfortable, uh, it's, you know, CRV or whatnot is, this is a kind of a refreshing thing to jump back into. It's just, uh, it's just a happy little truck. And uh, I really don't know anyone that could uh, kind of speak down into a third gen 4Runner. So again, that's kind of my quick run through. Uh, it's an interesting car. I like it. You know, I, if you're looking to buy one, do it. Again, it's just about really finding the right one. Um, I'm actually on my way to the shop right now to, well, <laughs> we, uh, we bought a bunch more Land Rovers. So, spoiler alert, waiting for three Land Rovers that are on the way that have not shown up. What? Actually, no, sorry. Four. There's five Land Rovers, additional ones, that I've not shown on the channel. I don't know why, I'm starting to panic. I, uh, we went a little bit nuts, and it's gonna, it, it's gonna hurt us. So, thanks for watching the channel. Uh, appreciate you tuning in. Feel free to check out the rest of my videos if you wanna see my take on a older Sequoia, uh, a Land Cruiser, um, an LX. You know, pretty much everything for this segment I've kind of covered now. A 4th Gen 4Runner, and a 5th Gen 4Runner, and a TRD Pro 4Runner, you know? So, I kind of kind of covered it all. I think I've got a decent perspective on it. So, drop me a comment down below if you like what uh, like what you see or have any questions about it. And remember, there's trucks for sale. If you're interested, uh, email me at addictedmotors.us at gmail.com. It should be in uh, the channel somewhere. So, and yeah, well, follow me on Instagram if you want to. I have most live updates there. A lot more of the up-to-date Range Rover, Land Rover stuff happens there as well. And uh, also follow the cabin at uh, Rover Woods. Check it out on Instagram. Uh, it'll be live on Airbnb at some point. So, appreciate oh, it. No.